For astrophotography, it is crucial that you be able to calculate the field of view. If you're not careful, you may find that Mars is only showing up on three pixels, or that your image of the Andromeda galaxy is so big that you're only seeing the middle 10% of it. Mars appears tiny to us. Even when we're close to it, it's only around 10 arc seconds. On the other hand, the Andromeda galaxy appears to be six times bigger than the Moon. As seen from the Earth, the Andromeda galaxy appears a thousand times bigger than Mars. Fortunately, the formula for the field of view is really easy to remember. It is the chip size divided by the focal length of your telescope. This gives the field of view in radians. Later, I will show you how to convert to degrees, arc minutes, or arc seconds. Looking at this formula, it should be obvious that no single camera and or telescope will be able to image both Mars and the Andromeda galaxy. The chip size is fixed. You can select a tiny portion of the chip to use, which is what digital zoom is, on your camcorder. You can also shorten the telescope's focal length with a reducer lens, or increase it with a Barlow lens, but these efforts won't give you the factor of a thousand that you need. For imaging the planets, I use Celestron's Next Image cameras. These are basically just web cameras without a lens. This is the original Next Image camera that came out. It's no longer sold. It has a 0.3 megapixel chip, which is 640 by 480. You can see it's very tiny, which is what you want for imaging planets. The new camera that they came out with, the Next Image 5, has pixels that are two and a half times smaller and five million of them versus 0.3. The resulting chip is only slightly bigger even though it has 16 times as many pixels. For everything else I use this two pound camera. It's got a fan built in to cool it. It's the Orion Starshoot Pro has 6 million pixels, but the pixels are much bigger. The resulting chip size is 1 inch wide, which you can see is considerably bigger than the ones used for planetary imaging. For comparison, I've drawn three rectangles the size of the chips of the three cameras I just talked about. This is the Starshoot Pro, the Next Image 5, and the original Next Image. Notice I have drawn a tiny rectangle inside the one for the new Next Image. This is how much is being used when in the 640x480 mode. This is two and a half times smaller than the older Next Image, which has 640x480 pixels altogether. Yet even this tiny rectangle is still large enough to fit Jupiter when using Celestron C11, which is an 11 inch diameter telescope with a 2.8 meter focal length. This picture was taken with the C11 and the new Next Image 5 while in the 640 by 480 mode. The red rectangle represents that smallest rectangle which was drawn on the piece of paper I just showed you. In this picture, Jupiter is about 300 pixels wide. Remember that from Earth, Mars appears four to five times smaller. Here I have taped the paper with the rectangles drawn on it to the door. By using this telescope lens, I can project an image of my neighbor's house onto the paper. The image is upside down. You can notice the blue sky on the very bottom. Using a lens with a much shorter focal length will produce a smaller image. In this case, more of the image will fit inside the rectangles, and this results in a larger field of view. Here is a close-up view of the rectangles while using the 660 millimeter focal length lens. By moving it back and forth, I can focus on the nearby blinds or the trees off in the distance. Notice how that tiny rectangle would easily show a bird in the trees. With the lens with the 80 millimeter focal length, we can see how more of the image fits inside the rectangles and would result in a wider field of view. Now back to our field of view formula. It may seem to you that this formula is too simple, and you're right. This is an approximation to a more complicated formula. A more precise way to calculate the field of view would be to draw a diagram like this and do some trig. The resulting formula would involve the arctangent function. For small angles though, we can get rid of this function and the two in the numerator cancels out the two in the denominator, and we get a much simpler equation. The area you get by using this simpler equation is plotted here. Notice that you get a quarter of a percent of error 
when your field of view is 10 degrees. The air is much smaller for smaller angles. For telescopic field of views, it makes sense to use the simpler formula. To use this formula, you have to have the same units for the chip size as you use for the focal length. If you use inches for the focal length, then use inches for the chip size. If you're trying to find out the field of view for a single pixel, and your pixel size is known in microns, and your focal length is known in millimeters, then convert your pixel size to millimeters before you divide. Remember that there are a thousand microns in a millimeter. Earlier I said that this formula gives you the field of view in radians. There are two pi radians in 360 degrees, or one radian is 180 divided by pi, or approximately 57.3 degrees. We also know that there are 60 arc minutes in a degree, and 60 arc seconds in an arc minute. So if we want the answer in degrees, we multiply by 57.3. If we want the answer in arc minutes, we multiply by 57.3 and 60. If we want the answer in arc seconds, we multiply by 57.3 and 60 and 60 again. Now let's use this equation to find out the maximum field of view I can get with my equipment. We'll want to use the camera with the biggest chip size and the telescope with the shortest focal length. I've already mentioned I have the Orion Starshoot Pro camera. The chip size is 25.10 millimeters by 17.64 millimeters. I have a small refractor by Astrotech that has a focal length of 432 millimeters. We use the formula twice, once for the width and once for the height, and we find my field of view to be 3.3 degrees by 2.3 degrees. This is just big enough to take a picture of the Andromeda Galaxy. Here's a picture of Andromeda that I took. In this video, I have shown you the wide range of sizes of astronomy targets and the importance of being able to calculate your camera's field of view. The formula is so easy to remember that you don't even need to write it down, but just in case, here it is one last time.